always the ministries, and tonight we're going to be uh, uh, talking about uh, two different things here in the uh, Bible. The Lord laid on my heart, and uh, uh, it's called, uh, Ma- it's in Matthew 25. It's about the, the kingdom of heaven and the ten virgins. So I wrote down a lot of stuff here, and we'll go over it as a, as a go, and hopefully we can learn something from, from this. Uh, so if you got a Bible, you can follow along with me, or you can go back to it. It says uh, in uh, in chapter 25, of course we've heard a lot of messages preached on this and uh, I just got through preaching on this here a while back, but uh, this is what the Lord's had me for quite a while now, so uh, dug into it, so this is what I'm going to talk about here tonight. It said, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Uh, if you look up the word virgin, it means purity, it means pure, it means chase, it means... Uh, discreet. So what the Lord is talking about here, he's talking about uh, purity. And he said they took their lamps and they went forth to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom here is uh, Jesus and we know uh, that Jesus is coming back one day for the bride. You know, we're the bride, he's the bridegroom. It said five of them were wise and uh, five of them were foolish. It said uh, they that were foolish uh, took their lamps but they took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And it said, while the bridegroom tarried, uh, that what my uh, word means wait, it said they all slumbered and slept. In other words, Jesus gave an illustration here. He said, uh, uh, if we want to break it down and say, uh, Five people was in relationship with the Lord. Five people did not have a relationship with the Lord. I went break it down like this. Five churches were in a relationship with the Lord. Five of them, what? And five of the churches were wise and five of the churches were foolish. You know, it could be a parable of ten churches or it can be a parable of ten people. So uh, that that's the way the, the, the Lord is. Anyway, it said that they had some, the wise had lamps. But the foolish, they had a lamp too, but they had no oil in them. The Bible said that the wicked, I looked some of this stuff up, the Bible said that the wicked can be a lamp. That's why it said the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. It said his light shall go out in obscure darkness. He shall be chased out of the world, like when a man dreameth and he wake up and he, he is no more. Uh, so it, it, it says here in scripture that the wicked can even be a lamp. So Jesus is talking about lamps here. Uh, sometimes we're, we're thinking, oh, he's talking about Christians being a lamp and stuff like that. But he's given a, a, a parable here. He said, you know, five of them had, all ten of them was a lamp. And uh, also, uh, of course, I looked up the word lamp and, and, and the meaning in the Bible uh, in a Christian life. It means life. It means light. It means wisdom or it means intellect. And also it means the spirit. The spirit of man is a, is a lamp. In, uh, in Proverbs 6.23, it says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproof and instruction are the way of life. So that's found in Proverbs. And we know that God gave uh, the commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments. You know, and that Ten Commandments, the Lord uses it to shine into our heart, you know, and, and we have to answer, say, you know, have we ever took the Lord's name in vain? Most of the people has. Have we ever told a lie? Most people has. Have we ever uh, 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 dishonored our mother and our father? Because the Bible says you've got to honor your mother and your father. Most people have. You know, have we ever stolen anything? Most people have. Have we ever uh, committed adultery? Have we ever lusted after a woman in our heart? Or has a, man, or, or has a woman lusted after a man in her heart? Most people have. Uh, have we ever coveted? Uh, what somebody else has got, or have we coveted and 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 not you know given to the poor? Most of us have, and uh, you know the those commandments is, is like a lamp, and the Lord shines them into our heart. It says, you know, you've broken my laws, you've broken my commandments, you know, and uh, you know uh, you've got to repent of this. You know, Jesus is the only one that could keep all the commandments to the fullest, and never sin in none of them. You know that, that he come down here and he proved that. Uh, man cannot and when Jesus came and kept all the commandments you know he gave us another commandment he said uh, well two he said love the Lord thy God with all thy heart all thy soul and all thy strength and all thy might one commandment and love thy neighbor as thyself and your neighbor can be somebody you work beside your neighbor can be somebody you sit beside in church 
your neighbor can be somebody you meet at uh, Walmart or anything. You know, neighbor goes a long ways. So uh, we got we got to be this lamp. You know, we got to be this uh, light. Anyway, it said uh, the bridegroom uh, tarried. He waited. He waited for people to. Uh, uh, get things right. He said they all slumbered and slept. I looked up the word slumber. The word slumber, it means to nod out. When you get really, really sl- uh, sleepy, you kind of nod out. You kind of doze off, you know, before you go into your deep sleep, your REM sleep or whatever. And Jesus said they all slumbered. In other words, they were not really, uh, uh, really tuned in here, you know. Uh, half of them were tuned in, half of them wasn't, you know. Half of them was interested, half of them wasn't interested. Half of them uh, had a desire, the other half didn't have a desire. But anyway, he said they all slumbered and slept. You know, uh, we, we say today that we are the sleeping church. I don't believe everybody's uh, 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 sleeping, but Jesus said the closer that it gets to him coming back, more people are going to fall away from the Lord and more people are going to say, well, I've got plenty of time. I've got, uh, the Lord ain't come back yet. All things appear as they were from the beginning. And uh, uh, so I got plenty of time, you know, to get things right. But anyway, uh, Jesus says he'll come back an hour when we look not for him. And he said he'll pull our portion with the hypocrites. And he said they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So anyway, it says they all slumbered and slept. Watch this. It said at midnight, there was a cry made. What's, what's this cry he's talking about? I, I believe he's talking about a cry of the Holy Ghost. You know, midnight is the darkest part of the night where it can't get any darker before it switches over to the next day. And we know the church, we know that the world is getting darker. We know sin is running rampant in the world, and, and we know uh, the Bible, Jesus says, evil seducers will wax worse and worse, and uh, men will get worse and worse. And, 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 and Jesus said, uh, in, in your own household, there'd be five against three, three against two, two against one, and his own enemy will be of his own household. And we know the world is getting darker. We see. Uh, LGBTQ uh, rising up and trying to be a, a, a kingdom, you know, and coming against the church. The church is getting uh, darker. And we know homosexuality is on the rampage, and we got homosexual uh, churches all, all over the place. Uh, you know, the world is getting darker. You know, we see Israel over there uh, getting attacked by, by Hamas, and Hamas is planning another attack. You know, the world is getting darker. But anyway, it said at midnight there was a cry by somebody. Uh, at midnight, it's got to make a cry. When everything is just so dark, you know, and without hope, you know, uh, somebody's got to make a cry to this ungodly world. And we've got to allow the Holy Ghost to make that cry. Anyway, Jesus says here, he said, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Another, behold, I'm, I'm coming. He said, Go you out to meet him. You know, one day Jesus is coming back. You know, over in Revelation, he said, uh, Behold, I come quickly. And he said, my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. He said, behold, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. What what reward is he talking about? You know, the Bible said that every man's got to bear his own burden. You know, uh, uh, some of us are going to have some heavy burdens, you know, that we had to bear and we press to it. And Jesus is going to give us a, a, a great reward. And some people, they didn't bear no burdens at all. They just put this thing in cruise control and... And uh, uh, they didn't never face no opposition, and uh, uh, they played around, they played church, and and uh, they really wasn't in a serious relationship with the Lord, uh, like He's talking about here. And uh, you ain't gonna have no reward. But Jesus said He's coming back to bring His reward with Him. Anyway, He said all those virgins arose and they trimmed their lamps. If you get an oil lamp, or if you go to town and buy an oil lamp, it's got a it's got a wick in it. And you wind it up, and you put oil in it, and uh, if, if you burn that wick so long, it turns black on top. It turns crusty on top. You got a, uh, you won't get a good burn. The old, the old lamp will just be full of smoke and soot if you try to light it. So you've got to, uh, you got to turn the, the wick down a little bit. Take a pair of scissors and trim the wick. Cut the wick off. Run the wick back down in the oil. Run the wick back up, and then light it. And then you get a clean burn. Uh, what Jesus is talking about here. He said, you know, they wrote, they rose up and they trimmed their wicks. And I know a lot of people have been hurt in church and I know a lot of people have been offended in church and I know a lot of people have let a, bitter, a root of bitterness uh, grow in them, you know, and, and try to and try to keep on living a Christian life with that root of bitterness in, in you. Jesus says you've got to trim that wick. You've got to get rid of that bitterness. You've got to, you've got to get rid of that, uh, uh, how somebody offended you or how somebody hurt you. You've got to, you got to, uh, you know, you got to put all that behind you, and you uh, just said, you know, you got to move on. You know, Jesus is coming back. We got to, we got to get over all that. 
But anyway, uh, he said, uh, 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 they all trim their lamps. Anyway, the foolish said unto the wise, you know, the Bible said only a fool said in his heart, there is no God. You know, and a, and a fool would say, oh, I got plenty of time. I got plenty of time. But the Bible said, don't tempt the Lord thy God. But, you know, well, we go back to the foolish. We go back to this uh, man in the Bible. He was a hoarder and he had, he had so, so much goods. He had, uh, his barns were busting at the seams and, and uh, he, he said, I know what I'll do. He said, and he looked at it and he contemplated. He said, man, i got a lot of time here on this earth. He said, I'm not, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going, I'm going to tire that barn down. I'm going to tire them barns down. And I'm going to build me some bigger barns. And he said, then I'm going to store all my goods. And he said, then I'm going to sit on my porch and I'm going to take it easy. And I'm going to, he, and he's even going to uh, speak to himself and say, so take it easy. for You've got many goods laid up for uh, many years. You ain't got nothing to worry about. And the Bible said that uh, the Lord called him a fool. And right here it says foolish. And we got to be careful when we call people fools and stuff anyway. Anyway, he heard a voice from heaven. It said, thy fool uh, tonight, thy soul will be required of thee. Because he was a massive hoarder and he wasn't shy with nobody. And he just heaped it up. And he just wanted it all for himself. And, 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 and the Lord said, you're, you're a fool. And he said, tonight... Uh, you're going to have a heart attack, you're going to die. And that's how a lot of people are. They just hoard it up and hoard it up and hoard it up and thinking, uh, you know, this world's going to go on, this world's going to go on. But I'm here to tell you, we're getting closer and closer uh, to the uh, coming of the Lord and, and the end of the church age. But anyway, the foolish said unto the wise, give us your oil for our lamps are gone out. So in other words, we got a, we got a lamp here. We got a vessel Okay, the lamp is the spirit inside of a man. The vessel is the body. So I want to I teach you a minute. The vessel is the body. And you can be a lamp and you can be a vessel but not have the oil. The oil is the presence of God. The oil is the presence of the Holy Ghost. And I'm afraid a lot of churches ain't got the presence of God. And I'm, a lot, I'm afraid a lot of people ain't got the presence of the Holy Ghost in their life. The presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. Because if I'm just a lamp, if I'm just a spirit, and I'm just a vessel, and I don't have the oil, I'm not going to get nothing done for the Lord. The oil is, uh, uh, it, the Bible said that God anoints us with the oil of gladness. So, you know, we've got to have this oil of gladness. It goes all the way back to Old Testament. He told uh, uh, Samuel, fill your horn full of oil. You know, Saul did not obey me. You know, I rejected him. He said, uh, go to, I got me another king, and fill your horn full of oil, and go uh, anoint this other person we are a horn full of oil. You know, we've got to, we got to, we got to get this oil. You know, because the anointing is in, in, in the oil, and we got to have the anointing. We're not going to get nothing done without the anointing. And that's what Jesus was saying here. He said these five had a had a lamp and a vessel. They had no anointing. They had no oil. They were trying to trying to uh, 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 trying to do things in the kingdom without the anointing, without the presence of God. And, and, and actually, they were just on a boat going around and around and around, getting nowhere, getting nothing done, trying to make things happen without the anointing, trying to make things happen with, without letting Jesus in their boat. It, Jesus caught the disciples out in, in, a, in, a, in a storm one time, and, and the winds were contrary, and the winds were just turning the boat around and around, and they were pedaling hard, and they couldn't get nowhere. And Jesus comes walking up to them, and, and uh, you know, and uh, they're scared and everything. Anyway, he, he finally, he gets in the boat with them. When he gets in the boat with them, he said, you know, let's go to the other side. He was in the boat with them. They had the presence of God, and they were anointed, and then they could go where they needed to go. We've got to have Jesus with us. We've got to have this oil. Anyway, these food, this foolish uh, uh, said, give us your oil. Give us the presence of God. Give us the anointing, for our lamps are gone out. Watch this, but the wise answer saying, not so, lest they be not enough for us and you, but go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So in other words, uh, 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 Jesus just sent them around, kind of like the children of Israel in the Old Testament. Uh, 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 they, com they murmured, they complained, and they never, and let me tell you something, we got a lot of Christians today in the church, all they do is murmur, and all they do is complain, and and they put heavy burdens on pastors. They put heavy burdens on leadership and everything. Uh, because uh, I saw this show one time, What's Eating Gilbert Gray. And a lot of people, they've got so much stuff eating them on the inside. 
and, and, and they're miserable on his side and they want to make everybody else miserable around them. So all they do is murmur and complain. Nothing's never good enough. They got this old uh, hateful mean spirit. They don't have this oil that I'm talking about. They don't have the spirit that I'm talking about. And they're just mean and hateful and nothing's never good enough. And that's how it was with the children of Israel. Nothing was good enough. So uh, God said, okay, you're going to spend 40 years in the wilderness and you're going to go around and around and around one day for every year one day for every year and uh until they all that they all perished and there wasn't no more of them and uh it was punishment you know but uh anyway jesus tells this group here that ain't got no presence got no anointing he said go and buy for them and he just sends them out going around and around because they weren't gonna buy none nowhere they weren't gonna get none nowhere and what you is in verse 10, it said, while they went to buy, it said, the bridegroom came. In other words, they played church too long. Jesus came. And they that were ready, you know, the Bible said, be ready. In an hour that you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So, you know, just like a thief in the night. You know, if somebody called you on the phone and said, there's a thief coming, going to break in your house and steal your stuff, you would wait up all night waiting on that thief to show up to come to your house to take care of business. Jesus said he's coming back like a thief in the night. And he says, uh, be ready in an hour, in a watch that you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Anyway, he said, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. He's talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb. One day the trumpet's going to sound, the church is going to leave. And, and when we leave, we're going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going we're gonna to sit down with Jesus and we're going to eat for seven years. Think about that. While seven years of pure hell and tribulation is going on down here on earth called Jacob's Trouble, you think you saw something bad over there with uh, Hamas attacking Israel, you ain't saw nothing yet. It's going to be like that all over the world. Uh, the Bible said that it's going to be so bad that uh, many people will beg for death, uh, but death will flee far from them. They won't be able to die. But anyway, he said, be ready. And they went with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Now, once that trumpet sounds, and the church leaves here, the door's shut. There's no more opportunities to get in. So we've got to seize the opportunity now and say, Lord, I, I don't want to just be a lamp. I don't want to just be a vessel. I don't want to just come and sit on the church pews and clap my hands and sing songs and, and just go out to eat and go back home and, and uh, be complacent and uh, you know, just go through the emotions. I, I, you know, I don't want to be like that, Lord. I, I, I want to be a lamp. I want to be a vessel. And Lord, I want to be the oil. I need the oil. I need the anointing. I need the presence of God, Lord, so I can be ready and so I can uh, get people into the kingdom. Anyway, he said, after came out, so the other virgins, the uh, five foolish virgins that didn't have the oil, and they said, Lord, Lord, open us. Uh, they didn't have the anointing. They weren't in relationship with the Lord. Uh, but he answered and he said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. You know, <clears throat> we've got to be in a covenant. The Bible makes it plain again. We've got to be in a covenant relationship with the Lord uh, when that trumpet sounds or when, or, or when our race is finished on earth. We've got to be in a covenant relationship with the Lord. Like Abraham was a friend of God and uh, he made this covenant with God. And, and when he did, when it come time for God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he got Lot and his wife and two daughters out of there. We've got to be in that same kind of covenant with the Lord. He said, he said I know you not. Verse 13, he said, watch therefore. In other words, he tells us to watch. Watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Now he did. He said day or hour, but he didn't. Know, he he did not say you would not know the season. You would not know the season when the Lord cometh. We know that uh, we are approaching uh, seasons of, uh, of 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 great opportunity. You know, I, I I said this year was going to be a season of favor. You know, to provide opportunities and open doors. For us to take the gospel to the na uh, nations of the world, you know, and we've got to do that. Now, I want to go over some of this. Anyway, uh, uh, I want to talk about a vessel here because he was talking about a vessel. A vessel, it's a container, but it's also a heart that is surrendered to God, a willingness to obey God's commands, a passion for God's kingdom, a commitment to prayer and fasting, and willingly to suffer for God's kingdom and the sake for the gospel. That's what a, uh, that's what that's what the vessel of a Christian is supposed to be. 
And uh, we've got we've got vessels of honor. Gigi said there'll be vessels of honor fit for the master's use. We've got we can be a sanctified vessel. We can be anointed ve- vessel. You know, there's all different purposes that the Lord can uh, use us. And uh, the Spirit, when it's connected to the vessel, the Bible says that the Spirit will provide life. It will provide light. It will provide wisdom. It will provide intellect. This Holy Spirit will give us all that, and we will be an anointed vessel for the Lord. Uh, if you go with me here to another scripture, it said, The Spirit of man, what is is the candle of the Lord, uh, search on the inward parts of the belly. If you go to Psalm 119, 105, it said, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And uh, it, I looked up the word oil. The oil meant purity, it meant obedience, and it means righteousness. And, you know, we've got the olive oil up here, and we take when people come up for prayer, we anoint people with oil because the uh, Bible says in James, is there any sick among you? Uh, you know, let him call for the elders of the church and, and uh, anoint them with oil and a prior of faith shall save the sick. It takes a prior of faith to save the sick. If they be any sins committed, uh, they be forgiven and the Lord shall raise him up. You know, so we believe in this oil. But also, uh, it means the presence of the Holy Spirit. We've got to have the presence of God. In uh, Leviticus uh, 24, 2, uh, he says, uh, uh, command the children of Israel, the Lord talking about telling Moses, that they uh, bring unto the pure olive oil, which is beaten for the light to cause the lamps to burn continually. We can't just be a lamp in a vessel on uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and a lamp in a vessel up here on Tuesday night prior meeting, and then rest of the week uh, we're not burning, you know. Uh, we've got to burn from the time we get up to the time we go to bed. You know, Apostle Paul says, you know, I, 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 I fight, he said, and I burn not, you know. And uh, he, he, he said, I press toward the high mark of the calling of God, you know, in Christ Jesus. He's talking about what Apostle Paul was talking about. He said, I'm, I'm not going to burn out. My light's going to continue to shine, and I'm not going to burn out. Church ain't going to burn me out. When they, when they beat me, it's not going to burn me out. When they stone me, they're not going to burn me out. When they put me in prison, they're not going to burn me out. I'm not going to burn out for the gospel. A lot of people get burnt out, and uh, they quit on the Lord. And uh, uh, but because they said I'm just I'm tired of churchy stuff I'm just tired of Christianity stuff I'm just burnt out on all this and a lot of them quit. We have 1,800 pastors. Well, if you understand this, and all, they walk away from the ministry every month because they say that the burdens are just too heavy and they're just burnt out. Uh, but you know we've got to uh, you know the Bible says that we've got to do everything in moderation. And a lot of people don't learn moderation. So we won't experience burnout. You've got to take time to relax. You've got to take time to, to go to the mountains. You've got to take time to go do things with your family and your kids. You've got to have a balance or you will experience burnout and your light will eventually go out. But we've got to be a light that will burn continually. Well, I'm going to stop right there. I want to just teach a little bit on this. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I want to invite you to come up here and be with us up here to. Oasis Ministries, if you don't have a home church, if wherever you are, go to your home church. But if you don't, come up here and be with us one Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Tuesday night, where we believe that, uh, that Jesus is going to come back for the church. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you next week.